Hi everyone, I just wanted to briefly go over introduction um, instructions for lab number two. What we're primarily looking at is how membrane potential changes based on ion composition in and out of the cell. So you can read this part up here on your own, and that'll give you a little bit of context on what you're actually changing. We're going to be using a program called MetaNeuron, and that's going to allow us to see how changes in ionic composition are going to, in effect, change resting membrane potential, and then later we'll see how those compositions end up changing action potentials. If you haven't downloaded the program on your computer already, here is a link to do so. Um, if you have a MacBook, you might have to additionally watch the video that I posted on Moodle. If you have an iOS of, I think, 10.7 or above, you might not be able to open the app after you've downloaded it on your computer. So you can watch that other video to look at how to troubleshoot through that. Once you have the program downloaded onto your computer, you'll launch it and this um, this area right here of your lab instructions just kind of gives you a rundown of what you're looking at um, when you're in lesson one. Now when I bring up this program the default lesson that is brought up is lesson number four. So you'll toggle back to lesson number one and then this information here should make a lot more sense. Lesson one is looking at rest, resting membrane potential. So this is going to uh, basically summarize what the concentration, uh, both extracellularly and intracellularly, uh, what those concentrations are for both sodium and potassium. And in this area, we can either change concentrations by deleting numbers, and let's say I wanted to make this 150. Okay. I can either change the values by typing them in, or I can click on this box and drag back and forth to change the value that I want. Okay. If in the case that you're working with this and you need to switch back to the default values, you'll just click on File, and you can restore the lesson to default, or you can restore all lessons to default. Okay. Um, so basically, in this first area of procedures and observations, you're just going to do the following procedures and answer the following questions with your lab partners, and this will help to familiarize you with how the program actually works. Okay, so primarily we're going to be operating in lesson number one, and you're going to vary the concentration of potassium inside the cell, okay, so intracellular concentration, vary potassium inside the cell, and then you're also going to vary um, sodium outside of the cell, which again would be concentration out. So see what happens when you vary those values, right? It, with respect to each ion's equilibrium potential, which is listed right at the bottom of each ion's box. Okay. Uh, looking at those changes, you're just going to discuss why the equilibrium potential changes as it does, and then use those conclusions in these two questions to kind of discuss what determines an ion's equilibrium potential overall. From there, you'll look at the resting membrane potential. So again, setting everything back to default. Okay, And then in this section, we're going to change um, the membrane's permeability to each of these ions. You're going to make it so that these values are relatively close together, and then making it so that sodium's permeability exceeds potassium's permeability. Okay. Look at how changing the permeability affects the uh, membra membrane's resting potential and discuss why that change might happen. The last thing you'll look at is action potentials, 
which are going to be located in Lesson 4. Now the primary thing you want to do in Lesson 4 is make sure that your amplitude of stimulus 1 is 200. So you'll notice the amplitude is um, represented by this red line down here. And you'll notice it spikes since I changed it from 65 to 200. Okay. From here, just going to vary sodium's equilibrium potential. Right? It can go down to a minimum of zero, and then you can go up pretty much as high as you want and see how the shape of the action potential changes and then speculate why that might happen. Okay, so just for reference, the equilibrium potential of sodium is here, and it's the same concept you can vary, let's say if we went to a minimum of zero, what happens, right? Or you can click and drag to change the value. Okay. Once you and your partners have kind of gone through that discussion area, you can move on to the write-up questions. What you'll do with this section is you'll copy and paste pretty much from here all the way down to the end of the document. Copy and paste that information into a new Word document, and that is what you will convert to a PDF. After you've filled in all the answers, you'll submit that PDF to the Turnitin link on Moodle. Um, and remember, each person in the lab group must turn in their own individual report. Okay. The first thing we're going to look at is the resting membrane potential. So you'll open up the Lab uh, 2 Excel sheet, and you'll notice there's two sheets within this main spreadsheet. Okay, so the first one you want to look at is the resting membrane potential. And what we're going to be doing in here is looking at how resting membrane potential changes as you increase concentrations of sodium and potassium on the extracellular side. So all of the stuff or the manipulations that we're going to be doing are going to be in lesson one. So I'm just going to restore everything back to their default settings and we'll go to lesson number one. What you'll start with is um, potassium. Okay, so you're going to increase potassium at intervals of 5 millimoles all the way up until you have a total addition of 40 millimoles. And you're going to record the membrane potential for each interval at which you're adding. So if we go into our potassium section, again, we're controlling extracellular concentration. So if we add 5 millimoles, we end up with 8. And then you'll notice this membrane potential is down here. This is the number that you would record in your Excel document. So again, we just added 5 millimoles of potassium, right? And we want to record resting membrane potential in millivolts. Okay, from here, you would just add another 5, which would give us 13, right? Again, record the membrane potential. Once you've recorded all of the membrane potentials, for potassium, you just restore your lesson back to default, and then you're going to do the same thing for the concentration of sodium. So again, adding five, record the membrane potential, and then you're good to go. Okay. After you've added all of these membrane potentials, right, at the respective added extracellular content per ion, you're going to graph this information in a scatter plot with straight lines and markers. If you have trouble doing this during lab, I, uh, I or Dane would be happy to help you. Okay. Um, and then what you're going to do uh, with that scatter plot is just make sure you have a legend. Because you have two different sets of data, you should have two series. One series should represent the um, uh, membrane potential that's changing as a result of adding extracellular sodium. The other series should represent the, the resting membrane potential change as you add extracellular potassium. Okay. Remember to include um, a legend for those series 
and make sure that your chart title and axes labels are appropriate such that they are representative of um, what you actually uh, it put into the graph. Okay. You're going to copy and paste the scatter plot you made in Excel right here. Briefly describe what the graph shows and then answer these following discussion questions based on the manipulations that you made in MetaNeuron. You'll then go to the second spreadsheet, which is labeled Action Potential. And we're doing something a little bit similar to the first spreadsheet. Um, but this one we're going to kind of be toggling back and forth between Lesson 1 and Lesson 4 because we want to know how variations in extracellular sodium affect the peak amplitude of a given action potential. So again, in MetaNeuron, we want to start with everything at default settings. We'll start in lesson number one. So our default is going to be 120 millimoles. If we go back to the spreadsheet, this would be equivalent to adding no sodium to the extracellular space. Okay, so this is your starting point. In order to manipulate or record what the uh, peak of our action potential is, we have to note what the equilibrium potential is for sodium. So when we're at our default setting of 120 millimoles, our equilibrium potential is 50 millivolts. We'll then go over to lesson number four Make sure that our equilibrium potential matches what we just calculated in lesson number one. And again, just make sure because we reset everything to default, make sure this amplitude of stimulus one is at a level of 200. Okay. In order to record the peak amplitude of the action potential, you can click and drag anywhere on this graph. Right. You'll notice that... Um, the point at which you are clicking right, has both a vertical and a horizontal gauge based on these white lines that are changing as I drag. Once you actually start hovering over um, this yellow line, which is representing our membrane potential, you should see that uh, yellow numbers pop up, right, or this yellow line pops up in the graph. In order to make sure that you're actually on the graph, you want your white line to match up with that yellow line, okay? So in this case, we want the peak of our action potential, and that's going to be the yellow value at the bottom right of the screen, okay? So that yellow number is going to be what you record in the Excel sheet. From here, all we're doing is we're going to change right extracellular sodium levels at intervals of 20 millimoles, going both in the positive and the negative direction. So an example of this, we go back to lesson one. We know this was our default concentration of extracellular sodium, and we can increase this by five. Take note, or sorry, 20. Just kidding. So we'll actually be at 140. All right, we take note of our equilibrium potential, which is 53.88. We toggle over to lesson four. We'll change our equilibrium potential to match what we just found in lesson one. You press enter. And then same thing, you can find where the peak is on your action potential, and then you record again the yellow number in the box at the bottom right of the screen. Okay, so once you have all of um, your peak amplitudes recorded, you'll create another scatter plot with straight lines and markers, and then again make sure that your chart title and axes labels are representative of the data you've plotted. You'll copy and paste that graph in this area. I'll add a, an extra note so you guys don't forget. And then you're basically going to use that graph to help describe why changing the concentration of extracellular sodium changes the action potential's peak amplitude. 
in your answer, you're just going to want to make sure that you describe how the changes in extracellular sodium are going to have an effect on sodium's equilibrium potential, and then describe how the changes in sodium's equilibrium potential affect the action potential's peak. Again, once you've finished all of these questions, convert your uh, answers or your answer document to a PDF and submit it to Turnitin by Sunday at 11.59.